We are here at the Degustivus Cooking School, and I am with Steve McHugh of Cured in San Antonio, Texas. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having us. So obviously, we have this amazing charcuterie spread in front of us. So today, we're talking about charcuterie. What even is charcuterie? What does that word mean? <laughs> well, it's really uh, kind of an all-encompassing word of dealing with meats, uh, sausages, force meats, uh, curing items like uh, hams or copas, uh, all those things. And then, of course, all the things that go along with it, your mustards, your pickles, your marmalades. Um, it's really uh, just a, a really good time on a plate. A really good time on a plate. That's how I'm going to start describing it. So when you're thinking about the meats, that's obviously the most important piece of charcuterie. You know, we have in front of us, you can have sausages, you can have pâtés, you can have different cures of pork and ham. What are the different types of items that you find on a charcuterie well, board? Well, it's all about textures, um, flavor profiles, what it is that mm -hmm. you might be looking for. So like, say for example, like a jalapeno sausage might not be for everyone, but really a, a very simple rustic country style pate that you'd find in south of France, Paris, anywhere, anywhere in the US, anywhere here in New York. I mean, it's very approachable and you can find them anywhere. And so it's things like that, you know, a chicken liver mousse. Um, and then of course, we always like to throw in uh, kind of an aged item, give it right. a, a little bit uh, of that that cured, that, that kind of funk that comes with an aged item like a copa that you see here or a mm -hmm. prosciutto or a ham or, or something along those lines. You also don't want to get bored and so that's why you right. see, you know, two different types of mustards, a sweet mustard, a spicy mustard. You see marmalades because sometimes it's, you know, everyone's palates are different so sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, eating a sweet marmalade with a pate is going to set off some different flavors right. for you than maybe I like to just have like a little carrot pickle uh, to help wash some of that fat and some of that salt that you might get. So right. it's, it's good to have all these different uh, textures and uh, flavor profiles kind of working and people are going to figure out really what works for them and what they really enjoy. Right. And so let's talk about pickled items because yeah. obviously, you know, charcuterie and pickles go so well together. What are the type of pickled items that you recommend having? Obviously, you can just have pickles, yeah. but it goes well with sort of all sorts of things. And why does it go so well with pickles? Well, Really, what you what you're doing here is you're you're cleansing your palate. So you're eating mm. things that are kind of salty and fatty, yeah. and then you eat a pickle. You've got that vinegar brine, and it kind of washes, and you're mm. ready for more at that point. So at the restaurant, we do mm. we'll do quick pickles like you see here with these carrots. We do you know bread and butter pickles. This is actually a fermented uh, green tomato chow chow that we make mm. at the restaurant. Which actually fermenting, I know it sounds very scary. It's something we do a lot of, and it's actually fairly easy if. Mm. Uh, you just look into it, it's just salting vegetables, kind of letting them sit, and yeah. they really just kind of create their own acid and their own vinegar. Mm. And what about marmalades, jams, mustards? You know, you know, are people expected to sort of put those on the pieces of meat, or do you have it on a piece of bread and then, like, what is the purpose of those? No, I definitely would, th I would definitely say eat it with the meat. You mm -hmm. want it to, um, they're gonna play off each other, you know, so mm -hmm. all of a sudden that marmalade or that mustard might pull something out of the sausage that you didn't quite taste, you didn't quite, it's like right. drinking wine with something and all right. of a sudden the food tastes better and it does really the same thing. Mm. Um, it kind of helps your palate along and, and, and pull everything together. Mm. And how do you pick which ones to have? You know, how do you pick, okay, the balance of mustard versus marmalade versus pickles and then obviously not overshadowing the meats, like how do you place everything? Well, it all starts with the vessel. You want to have a nice sturdy uh, bread or cracker that you're going to kind of build everything yeah. on. And so you start there and then put a little piece of pate or, 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 or a little smear of riette on mm. there and then try it with a pickle and see, you know, you have to have enough so that you can kind of play with all the flavors. And like I said, people are really gonna pick out what they like the most, you know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've, had, I've done charcuterie displays for people where all of a sudden the marmalade is gone. And then what about the presentation? Because I think so much of charcuterie is all about this like, gorgeous, you know, board or platter or, you know, here we have all different dishes, you know, how do you recommend serving? And obviously it depends on the number of people. Yeah, I mean, definitely have some fun with it. And it's, it's very easy, you know, this is something that you, you can sit around with friends out on the patio and drink wine, you know, and it's important to, to kind of, what I like to do is maybe build smaller uh, things that, that are easily replenished. Right. You know, so if, if maybe you have another one that looks like this in the back, and so it's not sitting out for three or four hours. You don't have a board where yeah. like everyone takes the prosciutto and then right. something is sad sitting on exactly. the end. Exactly. Like, yeah, nobody liked this. What, what are the items that you find that even for people who say, like, oh, I'm really not sure I'm into charcuterie, like, what are the items that are kind of the, the gateway drug of charcuterie versus items that might be surprising or fun yeah. for people? Well, any type of simple sausage, just a simple emulsified sausage is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, people love, you know, 
bratwurst and things along those lines, right. or like emulsified sausage. And then country style pâtés. Like I said, they're very easy to find. Um, it's an easy mix of pork, pork fat, and, and liver. Mm. And so the, uh, the flavor profile is very easy to palate. And then, you know, you get into um, the liver mousse, which definitely scares people. A right. <laughs> which, you know, a riette kind of looks a little scary and we're not sure what it is. And then all of a sudden people have it and they're like, this is amazing. Right. You know, it's basically pork that's been stewed and whipped with its own fat. And right. you know, it doesn't get any better than that. No. Uh, we make ours with a little apple and jalapeno, so. Mm. Just Amazing. A little Texas style with the house. Exactly. You? And what about, you know, what are the buzzwords to look for? If people say, okay, I want organic, or I want antibiotic free, you know, and they don't quite know, sort of, what are the words that you can look for that indicate your charcuterie is of a higher quality? Well, you can look at the age. Definitely a lot of supermarkets these days will slice stuff for you. And so mm. you can look at, you know, whether you're buying a prosciutto versus an Iberico ham from Spain right. or, um, you know, different pâtés. And you can also look and see the quality in a lot of places now. And mm -hmm. you can, you can ask for, you know, a center, a fresh cut. You know, a lot of times you'll see a little oxidation, you know, ask the butcher to just cut it right. and start fresh. Um, you know, I think, and then there's a lot of times like with the copas or hams or stuff, you can see the age. And so usually a little bit longer is, is better. There's gonna be more flavors developed in there as opposed to something that is kind of forced um, right. Or sit in a salt brine or something like that. Right. So you can you can you can see those things on the packages as well. You can find it, or you can just head to San Antonio and go to Cured if exactly. you want you to do Definitely. it for you. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for teaching us about charcuterie and how to build a proper charcuterie platter. And obviously, if you want to learn more, you can always go to San Antonio and go to Cured. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.